after viciously trashing almost every blood relative he has in his memoir, Spare, and deranged media appearances too. Prince Harry shouldn't be surprised if King Charles bans him and his vindictive wife from his coronation in May. There's also reportedly genuine, and I think, uh, warranted concern from senior royals that private conversations held around the event could end up in Harry's next grotesque tell-all. But journalist and royal commentator Angela Epstein believes Harry and Meghan should be welcomed at the coronation, but on the strict condition that the Duke of Delusion signs a non-disclosure agreement. Writing in a new column for the Daily Express, she said a commitment of contractual confidentiality not to reveal anything about the coronation and the arrangements surrounding it is a fair and proportionate response to Harry's previous actions. But what do you think? Should Prince Harry be forced to sign a non-disclosure agreement in order to attend the coronation? Dan at gbnews.uk. Tweet me at gbnews. You can vote and I'll poll there too. But first, to debate this topic, I'm joined by the aforementioned Daily Express columnist Angela Epstein, top talent agent Professor Jonathan Shallot, OBE, and the author of Elizabeth and Philip, the story of young love, marriage and monarchy, Dr. Tessa Dunlop. So, Angela Epstein, I actually think this is a really sensible idea of yours. How would it work? Thank you. Well, um, obviously, greater legal minds than mine would work out where the how they would ring fence the event. I suppose the it would just very clearly specify, as I suppose anybody who works for a celebrity uh, signs a non-disclosure um, agreement about the fact they can't reveal that I don't know Sting puts um, half fat cream on his cornflakes or or you know Kylie Minogue uh, likes to have kippers for a tea. Um, the idea would be that anything that that connotes to connecting with the coronation, um, he, he cannot talk about. And this is not about an argument about free speech. You know, obviously, it's a cornerstone of our constitution. This is not about muzzling a freedom fighter, as I said in the Express column. Harry fired the first salvo. He has proven that every conversation he's ever had is up for grabs on the public domain, that he wants to monetize it. This is a really, really beautiful occasion. I'm an, a monarchist. You know, Charles has waited a long time. The British monarchy goes goes back to Anglo-Saxon times. He should be there for all those reasons and because it's his father. But what would be worse, and also because can you imagine how he'd be able to kind of, the, the, the amount of, of horsepower he'd get out of, of being denied a seat there. Um, he'd really be able to, uh, to to talk at length about that just as, as Charles was being crowned. But, but the upshot is he shouldn't be allowed on a personal level to in any way trash this coronation. We're going to have heads of state from all corners of the globe coming. People should be able to sit there, enjoy it and not worry about what Harry's take is going to be, you know, on this. He has destroyed that level of trust. And I'm afraid this is the only way it has to work. Jonathan Charlotte, that seems like a fair point to me. I mean, look, in your entertainment industry, all the time you're getting folk to sign NDAs so they have the confidence that actually private conversations can't be used to make money in other ventures. And actually, Harry and Meghan have proven that they will use private conversations to feather their own nest. I mean, Harry even quoted uh, something that King Charles said to him at Prince Philip's funeral in spare. So surely this is a good idea, Jonathan. Well, I think if you're playing to the gallery, it sounds like a good idea, but I'm not sure in practice it's a good idea or realistic. First of all, the coronation is a global national public event. People throughout the world are going to have opinions on the coronation. Some people are going to love it, some people are going to hate it. So I don't see how you can say to Prince Harry, you can't have a, an opinion on the coronation when the rest of the world will. I don't think it's about not having an opinion. I think it's about not sharing private conversations that he has with the royals at the coronation or at events well, I, I don't think you can say to any child in the world any far from the world, no, you're going to sign a confidentiality contract with your parents about what you can and can't. No, but it happens with celebrities all the time, Jonathan. I you know that. that. Loads that, of people, that, and I bet some of your celebrities, down, down, down. Jonathan, when they date a new person, you know what it's like, big celebrity goes on a date with someone and they produce a contract and say, sign here or I'm leaving the restaurant. That happens all the time. It does happen all the time when the celebrity goes on a date or they go out to peep friends or have professional relationships, but not necessarily with their mum and their dad and their children. You're talking about private conversations that need to take place between Prince Harry and Meghan and their family. They will have to work that out privately as to what they can and can't say, okay. and in time they'll resolve it. T Tessa Dunlop, uh, you are someone who 
seems to support what Harry and Meghan do. Surely now, if they want to play a part in the coronation, they have to be prepared to sign an NDA because otherwise you know exactly what's going to happen. Um, and Anne and Edward are both worried about this. Their conversations will end up in the paperback version of Spare. Do you know what? I think I'm just going to award myself an OBE, a bit like Jonathan's, for sitting through, first of all, your diatribe against Jacinda and kindness. And secondly, attributing to me the identity of supporting Harry and Meghan. What I try to do consistently week after week is shed a little more light and a little less heat. And what really sad well, is the the question slightly then. patronizing tone. Forgive the slightly patronizing tone I'm taking now, but I feel sometimes like I have to repeat myself with you and Angela. If you really want the problem of Harry and Meghan to go away, all you have to do is stop talking about it. Today would have been a really good example. It was rubbish. actually positive D- royal headlines That's about King Charles rubbish, and his billions Tessa. of pounds That's offshore. That's absolute and rubbish said, no, because you know, know that they will so come to this I- coronation and they will share private secrets. You would have called me paranoid a few months ago if I'd said that. But what happened in Spare? They literally shared a conversation from King Charles, words that came from his mouth literally minutes after he buried his own father. So what you're saying is complete rubbish. Can you please answer the question? Should they sign an NDA to come to the coronation or not? I am suggesting, Dan, you don't need to point at me. I can hear you loud and clear, thanks to technology. I am suggesting that we don't need to discuss this. It is totally impractical. So you're going to refuse to answer the question? You're you're misusing, misattributing the word coronation, because as Jonathan has so eloquently explained, actually, and in fact, more broadly, it's very obvious you couldn't prescribe or prevent Harry from describing what the entire world was witnessing. No, but we're and not talking about Spare, that. We're talking rather, about private conversations. He actually didn't write about his grandmother's funeral. And you can't seek to adjudicate on private conversations between a father and a son. That would just destroy any chance of some kind okay. of domestic do, do, do you, Tessa, so Tessa, let me, just start, let me cut in and ask a question. Uh, do you think it was appropriate for him to sue a newspaper that decided to share a private letter that Meghan had sent to her father, Thomas, even though, by the way, she wrote that letter knowing full well it was going to be leaked. She's admitted that. Uh, But then Harry shared private text messages sent between Kate and Meghan. I'm just going to use my hairbrush and pretend it's a microphone so you can hear me a little more clearly. I am not an apologist for Harry and Meghan. I think lots of things they've done are inappropriate and damaging. And the poll out today, which so is what you we should be discussing, them. if we are, as you've said, genuine royalists, you and Angela, is that both William's popularity has fallen by eight points and so too has Harry's by seven. What Harry has done has damaged monarchy. He didn't destroy it. He's damaged it. And I'm suggesting the balm we need to encase our monarchy in if we want to solve things can you still hear me is actually oh, yes, to can. talk a bit less but look can you let about angela Harry and respond Megan, please let angela respond to, respond to not that. talk nonsense i mean that express newspaper if i still bought old fashioned newspapers i would line my fire with that article angela you're you're oh. better than that you that was literally you you talk about harry monetizing Tessa, history zip it now. you were monetizing zip it now, please. That. You've got to let other people speak. This is called The Clash, so people have to be able to respond. Angela, how do you respond to that? Right, well, I absolutely adore Tessa as as a person. I think she's a lovely person, really is. Um, But but in terms of her opinion, certainly the last patronising remark, I have to robustly disagree with. I think the issue is is a matter of, if you look at the the legal structure of this, (coughs) excuse me, (coughs) I'm going to cough, when things are in the public domain, there's, it's a free-for-all. Of course, everybody can comment about it. If I see David Beckham sitting in the middle of the high street having a bag of chips without any attempt to disguise who he is, then I can comment on that. I can take a picture of him, whatever. I couldn't do it with little kids, but obviously I can. We're not talking about the stuff that's going to be out there on the public domain. We're talking about the fact that Harry could say, oh, William's car was shinier than mine, or that when, when Meghan got there and there was a makeup lady, uh, Kate got first dabs with the blusher brush. 
brush uh, or whatever it is. And what I fear, and, and Tessa, you should appreciate this as, as a historian, um, is that we want this, we want this globally significant ceremony to be, you know, beautifully indeed, received. Indeed. And and look, becomes, I just want to bring Jonathan... Sh- no, very good point, Angela. I hear you loud and clear. I just want to bring Jonathan Shaladin uh, quickly to wrap up. Jonathan, uh, obviously you spend your career looking at public figures and sometimes saving their careers or actually working out that it's time for them to call it a day. Now, Tess has just made the interesting point that she thinks that, sure, Harry and Meghan are damaged, but damage has been caused to William and Kate too by this book. Uh, do, do you agree with that, Jonathan? Who's come out worse? I don't think anybody's come out of it well, but I think we should contextualise it. I think it's a brief storm and storms move on. This is not going to damage the royal family in the long run. It's a spat. It's a public spat. The whole world's excited about it. And, and the dog's bark, the car move, van moves on. What I would say to anybody when they talk about NDAs or contracts, only have a contract and an NDA if you can action it. If Prince Harry and Meghan were to talk about something William or King Charles said, King Charles or Prince William, I'm not going to sue Harry and Meghan for saying something about them. It just wouldn't be practical. So the point of an NDA is a completely pointless NDA. Okay. It makes the public happy. Well, look, I personally still think it's a very good idea uh, put forward by the Daily Express columnist and royal commentator Angela Epstein. But thank you too to Chairman of Intertalent Rights Group and London's leading agent, Professor Jonathan Shallot, OBE, and the royal author, Dr Tessa Dunlop. So who do you agree with? Should Prince Harry be forced to sign a non-disclosure agreement in order to attend the coronation? Pandy. I think uh, that should be the condition on which he is allowed to attend. Harry has made it clear to his family that he cannot be trusted. Richard says, no, he should sign a non-attendance agreement. Richard, I'd be well up for that, to be honest. And from David, he shouldn't be invited to the coronation at all. His recent comments have turned him into a walking security risk. He can stay in California and watch it on TV. And your verdict is now in. 83% of you agree with this idea from Angela Epstein that Harry should be made to sign a non-disclosure agreement to attend the coronation. 17% of you say he shouldn't.